What's up everybody, another beautiful day in the Dragon Isles and we're back with some more Mythic Raid Guides and today we're taking a look at Mythic Magmarex. Now I'll be going over most of the Mythic mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. And if you have any questions or suggestions for the fight, hit me up and let me know in the comments if you've downed the boss. Prog hype. Now if you're wondering where that dang Skarn guide is, sadly it will be a bit delayed. We killed Skarn with the cheese strat and we're extending our lockout, so I most likely won't be able to make that guide until we've cleared the raid. So let's get back to the guide. Setup wise you want two tanks, four healers and 14 DPS full single target blasters. It's a very tight healing and DPS check. You need as per usual at least one warlock to make the knockbacks a lot easier to deal with. Now you want to make three groups with four to six players in each group, a mix between range and melee. Each group will be in charge of one set of lava ejection soaks, these circles on the ground following igniting roar. On Mythic, the debuff you get from soaking one of these lasts 1.5 minutes instead of 1 minute and you take 300% increased damage from lava ejection instead of 150%. Now we'll always spawn 4 circles and it's important to always be 1 player per circle. They really hurt and so does everything else. Now we had the rule, if it's your group's time to soak and you step into a circle, you do not leave it no matter what. If another player is dumb enough to join you, you stay still because one missed soak is an instant raid wipe. Now if you're not part of the soak group and you happen to stand in a circle just instantly move out so the soak group can see that it needs to be soaked. Now this group will just rotate soaking these and tanks only take if it spawns right next to them to help out if they're able. It's not something you should count on. Our tank said on voice if they could take it or not. I got the next soak. Now range, prior soak in circles out of melee range. DPS check like I said is very tight but it is better to lose uptime rather than the entire raid because it Dead Raid does no damage. F -f -f -facts. So first igniting roar, group one spread and soak. Next igniting roar, group two etc etc and that keeps going for the entire fight. Now on mythic, one out of the three molten spittle targets will get a bomb or explosive magma. This one needs to be soaked by pretty much everyone in the raid, or almost, as the size of the puddle it spawns is determined by how many soak the initial impact. And it is fairly massive in size. And the dot you get from soaking these? Searing heat now lasts forever. So if you keep soaking up all the magma puddles, you'll hit 40 stack and get lightly torched, kinda crispy, and you die. So to counter this, you will only soak some of the puddles. And the name of the game is kill boss before it enrages or you run out of space and then it enrages. So the big brain strat is for the first three sets of molten spittles you soak everything so they vanish. We always drop the bomb soak right in front of boss slash raid max melee range and then the two regular spittles to the left and right of the boss. Extremely important that the magma puddles do not touch the boss as it gains energy from it and enrages. We had everyone except tank soak up the bomb magma puddle then melee moved and soaked the left puddle and tanks plus healers soaked the right puddle. But this you can swap around as you feel like. The important part is that everything gets soaked and preferably tankier classes gets higher stack sooner. Now after these three sets you instead only ever soak the bomb spittle. So for any subsequent set of spittles after the third one, bomb near boss and the two other spittles run to the edge behind boss and drops them there. It's very very important that you drop them in line like this along the edge. If you drop one near the edge and the other above it more into towards the middle, you are screwing yourself out of a lot of space later on. So always keep uh, edging and nobody touches those puddles for the rest of the fight. It's only the bomb puddle that you drop next to boss. And you do this until the 8th and 9th bomb spittle because those we sacrifice. So we made them run out into the middle of the room and then just explode there. Now it's important that you survive until you get out of it. And keep in mind if you use an immunity you won't take damage but you will still get stacks and you will die at 40 stacks. So you will always die if you run into the middle. So let's break down the fight a little bit. On pull, tank boss near the edge, face the boss along the edge and raid at its side. We put up world marks to the left and right for the regular molten spittles and bomb spittle just stacks on raid, max melee range. Soak bomb, then puddles and do this three times. The player that gets the bomb spittle will take a near fatal hit from it, so make sure to use defensives. We use gateway on the first knockback, make this as short as possible since you're only gonna use it to negate the knockback. No need to travel to infinity and be beyond. A baby gate. 
a raid leader called it. Then we just kinda gate on cooldown city, third knockback, fifth knockback, etc, etc. Now you wanna keep moving boss quite a bit after every spittle to keep making space between boss and the old puddles. Keep in mind that you wanna be able to fit two molten spittles in the space between. And once you're reaching spittle 8 and 9, sacrifice the bomb spittle but place the regular spittle as per usual. Players with low stacks can soak some old puddles if they're starting to creep up on the boss to make some more space, just make sure you don't hit 40 stacks. Now if you're severely lacking space, you can drop spittle number 8's magma puddle in one of the old ones, if the player targeted won't reach 40 stacks by doing so. So they'd have to run into an old puddle, drop it there and run out. But yeah, it's something to keep in mind, but otherwise just keep nuking away. Now the things you're gonna wipe on here the most is missing one of the small circle soaks, players dropping a magma puddle too close to boss and enraging it. You might not wipe right away, but giving it energy means you will wipe in the end. It will enrage, so you're pretty much screwed. Players positioning themselves poorly for knockbacks or not using gateways slash abilities to prevent being knocked away and just running out of space in the end. Like I said, currently as of making this, the tuning is very rough, so any mistake with puddles or giving boss energy means you will not make it. So do pump away, but don't skimp on the mechanics. And yeah, that's pretty much it for Magmorass. Now if you have any questions, hit me up here, become a patron or Twitch sub and get access to the Stanky Gaming Discord, which is the fastest way to get a hold of me. And it's also filled with a lot of useful info and helpful people, and occasionally pictures of dogs. Now as a patron, you can also get shoutouts in videos, coaching, among other things. And don't forget the usual stuff, like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, ring that notification bell. It really helps me out. I'm also streaming all my progression rating on Twitch, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Thank you, gaming. I'm also part of the supporter streamer event for Diablo 4, so I'm going to be streaming a lot of Diablo 4. So do come say hi. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. <laughs>